Welcome to day 14 of these 15 daily devotions introducing the book of Proverbs using Tim Keller's daily devotions, The Way of Wisdom. Over the last couple of days, we've been thinking about what it means to fear the Lord and how that leads us to true wisdom. We've seen that to fear the Lord means to revere him, to regard him with a sense of awe because of his goodness and his glory. Fearing the Lord means wanting to honour him in every part of our lives. It is a healthy fear. And today we see the link between being saved by the Lord and fearing the Lord. And the reading today is Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 6. Just one proverb, but it shows us that link between being saved by the Lord and fearing the Lord. Proverbs 16 verse 6. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. And the reflection I'm going to read today is from February the 16th. Through God's covenant love, sin is atoned for. So our salvation comes not because of our love and faithfulness, but because of God's. Yet verse 6 tells us that the fear of the Lord this salvation produces in us leads us to shun evil. This is what we see also in the New Testament. The Protestant Reformation summarised this biblical teaching about Christ's salvation. It denied that faith in God plus the shunning of evil merited salvation. But it also denied that true faith in God could bring a salvation that did not issue the shunning of evil. Rather, the Reformation taught that we are saved by faith alone, but not by a faith that remains alone. That is, we are saved by Christ's atonement, apart from any merit or goodness in us. But genuine faith in Christ will always result in a grateful joy that produces life change. The gospel is true wisdom. Has your faith produced real life change? Would the people closest to you say that over the past two years, you have become more loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, humble, and self-controlled? The gospel shines a bright spotlight, doesn't it, on the love and faithfulness of God in coming to earth for us in the person of Jesus to atone for our sin by dying on the cross in our place, bearing our punishment for us. God's love is displayed in all its staggering glory and his faithfulness is displayed as a stunning contrast to our faithlessness. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The cross is the ultimate fulfilment and highest example of the proverb we've read today. Proverbs 16 verse 6. It's, it's that proverb in action. Through God's love and faithfulness, our sin is atoned for. But what should our response be to the love and faithfulness of God seen in the cross? Well, I guess most of us would instinctively respond, gratitude, thanks, thankfulness, worship, adoration, praise, joy. And all these responses are right and appropriate and are commended elsewhere in scripture. But Proverbs adds one more response. In Proverbs 16 verse 6, the response to God's love and faithfulness is fear of the Lord. A desire to honour him in our lives. A healthy fear of dishonouring him. The response of Proverbs to the love and faithfulness of God is the shunning of evil. The determination to live in a way that honours God by not returning to our old ways of living. The desire, as it were, to turn away from the sin that had to be atoned for and live a new life with Jesus as our Lord. 
That's the right response to the love and faithfulness of God seen at the cross. Yes, faith. Faith in Jesus alone, but not a faith that is alone. <laughs> a faith that is accompanied by obedience. The book of James is sometimes described as the New Testament equivalent of Proverbs. And that's because it's a book full of practical wisdom. In James chapter 2, verse 26, James says this, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Really, James is just saying in blunter terms what Proverbs says. Wise people who have grasped the glorious character of God, including his love and faithfulness, will respond with grateful obedience. Their lives will be different. They will shun evil. Their primary desire will be to honour the one who loved them and gave himself for them. Through God's love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord that results from it, evil is avoided. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful and thankful for your willingness to come and serve us by dying in our place. Thank you for your love and faithfulness to us in atoning for our sin. Please help us to respond wisely to your sacrifice with obedience. Thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit to empower us to live as we should, new lives that demonstrate a healthy fear of dishonouring you. Help us to live for you today, for we ask these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time for our last devotion.